Hi everyone, my name is Daniel George, and in my connections paper, I am writing as my grandfather, Luther George, as he receives the educational benefits of the GI Bill or the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944. And so my essay takes the form of a letter written actually to his mother as he goes into his final year of college at Rutgers University in 1949. Um, and, and, and it kind of starts as he experienced hearing about the GI Bill for the first time actually as a soldier on the radio and all the way through his present experience as a student. And so I, I really thought that, um, you know, for this paper, I was really excited to step into his shoes. I mean, it's my grandfather, but to kind of really anchor this paper in his experience so that I could not just understand kind of what happened, but how he would have felt as somebody, you know, having his, his you know, world blown right open of seeing, you know, all, all of a sudden, these new possibilities of, you know, what his future for his family could be. And so, you know, Luther, my grandpa, he grew up poor. He was a working class uh, family. And, you know, for him and for a lot of people throughout the U.S. in that experience, there really wasn't an assumption that they could even have access to higher education. Just as we've been reading throughout Thelen's book, you know, the entire time, it, it's really a more recent development over the last half century that, uh, and because of the GI Bill, it, it was one of the big things that actually made higher education accessible to people who weren't from wealthy families. And so he just kind of assumed, hey, I would love to get my college education and increase my opportunity, but I just can't. It's just not in the cards for me. And in addition to that, his father actually served in World War I and was very mistreated coming back from the war, did not receive the same benefits that he did. And so his just, his assumption was that um, you know, he didn't have access to these opportunities and that the government really didn't care about his experience coming back. You know, he still wanted to serve his country in World War II. He still wanted to fulfill that call, but he just assumed kind of that uh, the, the government wasn't really looking out for him. And in that, uh, I actually thought, you know, th that was kind of a really interesting avatar, Luther's experience for really the nation's perception of the government and higher education as a whole. You know, so many people throughout the country were in his shoes of being a working class citizen. And, you know, 16 million Americans uh, served in World War II and, you know, probably were not really expecting a whole lot of support when they came back. I mean, they, they, they wanted it and they, I'm sure, thought that they deserved it because they did after all they, that they did for our country. But probably weren't expecting a whole lot after World War One and then like the Great Depression, too, and just how horrible the last you know decade or two really had been for america and so honestly the first time that uh, i record luther hearing about the gi bill was actually uh, over the radio in the barracks you know with his fellow soldiers uh, hearing one of fdr um, uh, franklin delano roosevelt's um fireside chats which it, it was really interesting as i was doing my research just hearing about how like there was actually a lot of gridlock in congress about you know the passing of this bill, and there was there was actually a lot of uh, you know um, what's the word I'm looking for? There was actually a lot of uh, um, oh man uh, trouble and resistance. Sorry about that. There's actually a lot of resistance from other higher educational leaders. You know, people who are of course trying supposed to be leading the leading the cause in higher education because you know they they really didn't want uh, the the realm of higher ed to change. They're worried about lowering their academic standards. Like, hey, if we have all these people that, um, you know, maybe are not from affluent families, then they might not be as educated coming into college. And, you know, they're more rough around the edges and our academic standards and our prestige are going to be lower. They were worried about that. And they wanted to just return to business as usual. Like, hey, pre-Great Depression, let's just get back to the, the zone where we've just got you know, all of our, you know, wealthy, you know, young men coming into these colleges so that things can be back the way they were. We don't want them to be different. And so there was a lot of fear of that. And FDR really just kind of wanted to cut through the red tape. At least that's what the rhetoric was. And so that was actually the first time that Luther heard about the GI Bill was him and his fireside chats, like essentially, you know, calling to Congress and saying like, do your job, you know, get this through our our soldiers, our men and women overseas are going to come back soon and they need to have these benefits coming through. And so naturally that rhetoric, you know, as I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, a lot of times, you know, hearing that from, you know, the big man in the, in the White House, 
uh, you know, a lot of times the, the thought is maybe that's too good to be true. You know, it really benefits for all of us to be able to go to school, to be able to get jobs after we get back. That sounds really kind of too good to be true. And so um, that was really his mindset. And honestly, a lot of a lot of the people's mindset, you know, around the time of like, you know, could this really be something that like, what's the catch? What's the fine print? There's always a fine print because, uh, the, you know, the government doesn't care about me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the little guy over here who, uh, you know, has never really, um, you know, had any sort of prestige or, or, or any kind of, uh, you know, wealth to really speak of. And so, um, you know, I would say, and, and one of the interesting things that I found in my research is that that's actually not entirely unfounded. Of course, there was the previous experience of World War I veterans that was like, okay, obviously, government messed up there and did not support them at all coming back from from the war. But then also there was like the Great Depression that had just happened that, okay, we've got this kind of boost to the economy that the war did, which, you know, obviously the war, horrible thing, but really served to create a lot of jobs. And the government actually wasn't just worried about, hey, we want to support each individual veteran. They were also thinking about, man, we really do not want to return to the Great Depression and the total lack of opportunity that was there. And we, they were afraid of another public backlash of like, of, of you know, the, the post-World War I treatment. And so they were really trying to cover their own skin as well. And so honestly, a lot of the skepticism about like, is the government really looking out for me? No, they, they had their own interests, but it is something that the GI Bill overtly benefited so many people throughout the nation. And so, uh, you know, just some of those benefits just on the ground level, you know, as we read in Thelen and, you know, a couple other things that I researched, tuition, fees, books, and a monthly living allowance for students. And the, 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 the benefits, the time that you were given those benefits uh, was based on the time that you served in the military. And so up to four years, you know, up to a full undergrad degree. Um, and so uh, Luther served for four years, and so he got a full degree, but the baseline was one year, and then it kind of went up from there, depending on how long you served. And so there was also non-educational benefits, of course. It wasn't just educational, kind of as, you know, Thelen put, you know, the, the educational benefits were kind of, you know, like an afterthought for a lot of people. It was more about the economy and less about higher ed specifically, but it did benefit, though. So non-educational benefits included, you know, job search assistance and un unemployment benefits. Like so many of the horrible stories that we hear even today about veterans, you know, who are homeless and, and you know, living off of, off of um, you know, not very much after they get back, you know, being mistreated after so much that they did for our country. Uh, the GI Bill was an effort and an, 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 an incomplete effort, but an effort to combat that specifically. Um, and the result on higher education, you know, campuses, on institutions was a massive influx of non-traditional students for the first time ever. You know, this is the first time that we really see a different group other than, you know, a lot of, you know, rich white men on campuses, 18 year olds. And so uh, by 1947, almost half of all college students were veterans, which is kind of crazy to think about. Like all of a sudden you've just got all of these like, you know, 20 through 26 year olds like on college campuses that are there for a completely different reason. They're not there to party. They're not there for the social aspect most of the time. They're there to work and get their degree, which is what you should be at college for, but uh, uh, that really wasn't the case as we've seen a lot of times. And so they began to change campus culture. They really proved a lot of those naysayers wrong, you know, who were like worried about the lowering academic standards because, you know, they were the ones who were really, um, uh, who, who were really like the most plugged in. And so not everybody's experience was positive. Uh, you know, Luther, my grandpa was a white male. And so he definitely got probably the best outcome of, you know, be, having the financial support and then not really having to deal with any discrimination other than that. And so, you know, African-American students, and in my paper, I do talk about the experience of some of his friends, African-American students still dealt with a lot of discrimination. They got the financial benefits, but the social stuff was still really, really, really messed up in, in, in their situations. Um, but largely, you know, the financial opportunities that were available to these veterans as a result of the GI Bill didn't just open up the door for them, but it opened up the door for non-traditional students and it changed the landscape of higher education forever. So thank you so much for listening and yeah, you guys have a great day.